Hey guys, welcome to another installment of Inferno Friday. This is Archon. Last week, me and Dreadnought asked you guys to leave in the comments what you would like to hear us talking about this week. And what you guys mostly said was you want to hear about our skills and our gear, as well as what skills and gear you should be using while you're leveling. So that's what this video is going to be about. I'm going to show you how you can balance your skills and buy the right gear that's appropriate for the difficulty you're at and addresses any problems you're having uh, through leveling or just dying a lot in Inferno. And the real key to finding a good skill build and gear set is a balance between doing a good amount of DPS and having enough defense. It's really easy to get carried away with, D to, with DPS and I've definitely fallen in the trap of not wanting to sacrifice DPS for defense but I found when you make the sacrifice, you usually end up doing more damage anyways, because you can take more hits, you're spending less time kiting around enemies, and just running away. So, we're going to be talking about skills, and we're also going to be talking a little bit about gear, because your gear can influence what skills you're using, as your skills tend to enhance some of your stats. So we're going to start with gear, we're just going to run down what gear you should be looking at, when you're looking for high DPS builds, such as when you're in low levels, normal difficulty, and what's, what uh, gear you should be looking for on the harder difficulties or when you're trying to add more defense to your build. So we're just going to go to the auction house here, and I'm just going to show you some of the stats you should be looking for. If you're looking for more damage, so this is mostly going to be at lower levels, when you're plowing through stuff, you don't really have to worry about defense. Weapons are the easiest way to increase your damage and especially weapons with high um, damage. High damage weapons up your damage quicker than anything. Now other stats on the weapon are going to help as well, especially intelligence um, and there's a few other ones that are really good. But the weapon damage will increase your damage faster than anything. So if you need more damage, the first thing you should look for is a weapon on the AH that has a higher weapon damage than your current one and that will give you a huge boost. After that, you're looking for stats on your armor. Um, the main one, of course, is your primary attribute, intelligence. Intelligence gives you a percentage of your base weapon damage, so 100 intelligence would give you an extra 100% base weapon damage. Uh, attack speed's also really good, but it's not on most pieces of gear. So you can look for stuff with high intelligence. And another one is crit chance and crit damage. Uh, they're two different stats, as you can see right here. These are really good if you have a lot of them. The more crit damage you have, the better crit chances, and vice versa. However, it's not worth it to have a little bit of them. Because they multiply each other, they're only really good when you have a lot of each. Uh, Dreadnought has a lot of crit chance and crit damage, and it works really well. I don't have much, so when I find gear with it, I, don't, I tend not to like it as much, because it's not going to help me unless I decided to do a crit build and go crit heavy. So when getting your damage up on... On armor, you're mostly looking for intelligence, and uh, attack speed would be second. Now, after a while, you're not going to just want damage. You're going to need some defense in there to keep yourself from dying. Uh, this might happen around Nightmare, but whenever it happens for you, just pay attention. When you start dying more, the new thing you're going to look for is armor. Plus the armor gear. And actually, we'll keep intelligence on this search, and we'll just add armor. Plus the armor gear is going to help you a lot. Here's a bunch of legendaries that are actually really cheap. I wonder why this must be a pretty popular one. That's an awesome one. Go buy some Frostburn gauntlets. Anyways, armor is great because it's going to be multiplied by your energy armor skill, which I'm going to go over in the skills section. So right around Nightmare, whenever you start dying, start looking for armor on your gear. You don't really need it before here because you're just trying to do as much damage, but eventually it's going to get harder, you're going to start dying, get that armor, it's going to help you survive longer. And finally, once you get to level 60, you're going to start looking for plus to all resistances. All resistances is going to help you a lot at level 60 because you're going to still be using energy armor and you're going to get access to the prismatic rune, which will give you 40% increase to all your resistances. So we're going to change the level range to 60. Actually, I'll just do 55 to 60 since that's when you're looking for armor gear. And you can see a lot of stuff comes up for that too, because there's a ton of items on the AH, and it's just going to get better. You can always find exactly what you need, as long as you're willing to wait a little while for a good price to come up. So that's kind of the breakdown. 
of gear between low level to high level or you could also look at it, at it as from high DPS to high defense. Now we're just going to look at skill builds and how you should adjust your skills as you level up or just to compensate for not enough damage or not enough defense. So we'll start out with a low level high DPS build. Uh, this is a great build if you're just trying to do a lot of damage, so great on normal difficulty. You'll see it's actually required level 35, but with a few changes we'll be able to make it into a level 20 build, and I'll show you what those changes are as we go through the skills. So the first one I have on here is Magic Missile with Charged Blast. You'll see I'm just going to keep this on my build all the way through till we get to the defensive build, just because it's awesome. It's a signature skill, so it doesn't cost any arcane power, but it still does an awesome amount of single target damage. Uh, it does almost as much as Frost Ray, but it doesn't cost any arcane power. So I'm going to keep that on there. Um, that way you don't have to use up another one of your slots for a high damage single target skill. You already have it with your signature. The next one I'm using on the high DPS build is Disintegrate. Uh, this is just what I found to be the best AoE DPS. It does a ton of damage to everyone right in front of you, so it's great when you have hallways and stuff. And I use Convergence to give it extra AoE. Now, if you're not high enough level to use this, I would suggest using Arcane Orb with Obliteration. And that also does a lot of damage and seems to work pretty well. If you're level 60 and using Arcane Orb, I would suggest using Celestial Orb, which instead of increasing damage like Obliteration, it will pierce through targets, damaging any enemy that passes through it. So it kind of has a similar effect to Disintegrate. The third one I have on here is Diamond Skin. Uh, this is just your defensive ability, but it's also going to help you do a lot of extra damage because you can keep hitting them while they're beating on you instead of having to run away and kite them. Uh, it's also really overpowered at low levels. And I have the crystal shell on here to give more absorbed, but if it's not breaking, at low levels you might even want to try prism, which lowers the cost of all your spells by 7 arcane power while it's active. And that's a great one if it's not breaking. At higher levels, I think crystal shell is better. Now, if you're a higher level, diamond skin could also be replaced by mirror image. It has kind of the same effect. It allows you to keep attacking while people are beating on your mirror image this time, as opposed to on your diamond armor. And my favorite rune is duplicates, which makes that so there's five instead of two, which just gives you a lot of time to DPS while they're beating down your mirror images. But at low levels, I would suggest a uh, diamond skin with either prism or crystal shell. Teleport with wormhole will always be on my build. It's just an awesome skill whether you're fighting or not. Um, if you're not high enough to get the wormhole rune, I'd still suggest getting teleport. This is a great way to get around when you're not fighting. It lets you teleport four times if you just hold it in. And it's also a great way to get away from enemies, or I like to kite them through things and just kind of teleport all the way through them to get to the other side, and it works really well with wormhole. I have Archon on here. You could replace this with pretty much anything. I just like having Archon. I don't have it ruined because I assume this is a low level build, but if I was going to ruin it, I would put on Improved Archon. It does an extra 25% damage, and it's great for those hard blue or yellow pools. Um, and then, of course, Magic Weapon with Force Weapon is just an extra 15% damage. Um, it's a great way to use one slot if you're looking for extra damage. And the two passive skills are Glass Cannon, more damage, take more damage, uh, but fine at lower difficulties. And Astral Presence is always a good one, just more arcane power. You could also use uh, Power Hungry if you're a lower level. It gives you arcane power when health globes are found, which is great for groups. But Astral Presence is also good. Nope, now I have all three. Okay, so now I'm going to go through changes you can make to make this very high DPS build more defensive and also better for the higher levels. So as you level up, the first change I would make to this build would be to take off Glass Cannon. And we could replace Glass Cannon uh, probably with Astral Presence. Uh, we could also do Prodigy, which gives you arcane power when you attack. Uh, now you have a little bit less DPS, um, but you're not getting that reduced defense, so it's a little bit more defensive. The next change I would make after that is to add Mirror Image, or to add Diamond Skin if you chose to use Mirror Image there instead. And um, you could do that instead of Magic Weapon or Archon. I'm just going to go ahead and replace Magic Weapon with mirror image and again this is actually going to let you do more damage um, 
if you're getting beat on a lot because instead of having to kite them you can pop diamond skin or a mirror image and let them beat on that while you just attack and with both of these on here you can have one of them up almost all the time which becomes very helpful if that's still not defensive enough for you you want to go a little bit more defensive which I'm sure you would this is still very high DPS you could add the evocation rune and evocation reduces all your cooldowns by 15 percent this works great when you have diamond skin teleport and mirror image uh, it also helps that Archon's on here right now four big cooldown abilities uh, evocations can bring them all down and you're gonna be even more defensive because at this point you really can have diamond skin and mirror image up all the time if you want to take one step more go a little bit more defensive I would suggest adding blur does 20 percent less damage from melee attacks at this point you're taking a little bit less damage at least from melee attacks and you probably have three passive skills around this time you might be level 30 and around this time is also when you're probably going to be getting to nightmare dying more and you're going to start getting that uh, extra armor gear and because of the extra armor you're probably also going to want to get energy armor and I'm gonna go ahead and replace uh, diamond skin with energy armor you won't need nearly as much defense once you have this and we'll just keep it unruined for now assuming you're low level uh, but once you have energy armor assuming that you have a lot of high armor gear from the auction house you could probably also take off mirror image uh, you might not need either of those but you can just play around with it decide if you want uh, one of those two as well but we'll put force weapon on there also on a side note if you don't like diamond skin or mirror image that much frost nova and wave of force also work really well and you could replace either of those two with frost nova or wave of force i just prefer diamond skin and mirror image myself so now we have the energy armor which is increasing your ar armor by 65 uh, percent which is a lot especially if you're getting extra armor gear at this point you have less cooldown moves because neither of these have cooldowns evocation might not as be as worth it and so you might want to change that to galvanizing ward if you're level 40 which will increase your energy armor by two minutes and it also gives you a lot of life per second it's 310 at level 60 which is still a lot at level 60 uh, so it's a good one to have when you're using an armor if you're not level 40 you just choose your favorite passive and put it there now we're getting a little bit more defensive if we want to take it one step for, from here I would switch out what is probably disintegrate by this point with blizzard blizzard's just a bit more defensive it's not going to do as much damage but it's going to freeze them and I would put in frozen solid this is my favorite one if you're level 42 it has a 20 percent chance to freeze them for three seconds which is really good and I would change your magic weapon or archon whichever one you want to change to Hydra and I like to use Venom Hydra it's really good because if they're standing in it long enough although it says 18 weapon damage per second that can get up to 100 or even 150 weapon damage so Venom Hydra definitely does the most damage as long as the enemies are standing still now you could also choose to use cold-blooded since you're using blizzard anyways that's going to give an extra 20 percent to cold attacks and at that point you might want to use the frost hydra instead of the venom hydra but typically i use the venom hydra so i can save free up this extra passive skill here another option instead of using blizzard and hydra at this point would to be to use arcane orb which is a little bit more defensive than disintegrate since you don't have to stand there while you're casting it with celestial orb the one i talked about earlier that'll pass through the enemies and then instead of hydra Venom Hydra, use Arcane Hydra because you're going to use the passive Temporal Flux, which will slow enemies by 30% when you deal Arcane damage. So you still get that chill that you're going to get with the Blizzard, but now all your skills are Arcane, so you're just keeping them 30% snared all the time. Uh, I tend to prefer Blizzard just because it has a larger radius and it lasts there for 6 seconds, so you rarely have to even get close to enemies. But I use this one sometimes too, it does a bit more damage and I also like it and the only other change I would make is at level 60 energy armor change whatever rune you've been using to prismatic armor is increase all your resistance by 40 percent and this is also when you're gonna start buying resistance gear on the AH so you'll get 40 percent to all that extra resistance and that's gonna give you a lot of uh, damage mitigation before using prismatic armor um, really all of these are pretty good you can just decide which one you like the most um, but force armor is great for boss fights because it only allows you to take 35% of your maximum damage in a single hit 
so you can't get one shot you can't even get two shot but at level 60 I definitely encourage you to use prismatic armor and to get that weapon resistance gear on the AH and at this point this is pretty close to what I'd be using um, like I said I use blizzard more so we'll just go back to that setup I've been using blizzard with frozen solid and venom hydra and some I might still use cold blooded just get the extra damage from blizzard so that's kind of a walkthrough of the skills and how you go from making a high DPS build to a high defense build. Uh, if this still wasn't high defense enough, of course you could change Archon to the defensive skill of your choice, either a Mirror Image or Diamond Skin, uh, Frost Nova, Wave of Force, whatever you prefer really, and, and that would make it even more defensive. Archon is nice for those blue and yellow pools can be kind of hard and it gives you an extra 40% armor and resistance and your armor and resistance are already, already going to be crazy high from that gear and and the other and the energy armor so uh, that's you're going to be really buff when you're in Archon so I hope this video has helped you guys whether you're not doing enough DPS or you're dying too quickly you can kind of go up and down this ladder of skill builds and gear sets I'll post a link in the description to the initial skill build as well as this one and each of the steps I took to get there. Keep in mind this is one of many great strats out there right now. So there's plenty of working strats. This is the one that I've had the most luck with. It just happens to be my favorite. Hopefully it'll work for you too, but maybe you've found something that works better or maybe you found a variation of this build that you'd like to share. Either way, if you guys have a build that is working well, please post it in the comments below. That way other people can read through the comments and get ideas. And um, I know you guys have seen some things that I've missed, so hopefully I'll be able to improve my skill build as well just reading through your comments. Uh, pretty soon me and Dreadnought are going to be posting a video of us playing an Inferno, probably just getting raped on Act 2 of Inferno. Um, but it should be fun to watch anyways. So thanks for watching our videos, guys. Uh, thanks for subscribing. You guys have been awesome. Uh, keep watching the videos. We'll have another one for you soon. Thanks.